Well hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Mr Fish. Today's video is answering the questions that you asked. Uh, about a month ago I put out a video asking or inviting you guys to ask me some questions and said I'll do a questions and answer video. Well this is the answer video to those questions. So I'm going to crack on with it. I'm going to look down here because my iPad's down here and all the questions are on the screen. There are questions on other videos that I've uh, produced and put up on YouTube, but I'm not gonna answer those now. I'm just gonna specifically stick to this video because I did ask and it's only polite. So I'm gonna crack on. And the first question is from Ricky, in brackets, MaxGT33. And the question is, what dream bike would you like to own? That is a trickier question than I thought it would be, to be honest. Uh, at this moment in time, it would probably be between the Africa Twin, the new Africa Twin Honda, or the BMW 90, the, the classic uh, calf racer sort of like type of naked bike thing. Uh, totally different bikes, but that's the problem I have. I change my mind on bikes by the month, by the week, day, sometimes hourly. Uh, it's a standard bugbear of my wife. Every time I buy a new bike, I come back and then I say, and for my next bike, <laughs> or I start looking again. And I think it's because I haven't found that one dream bike that I'm gonna keep forever at the moment. But you can put it in categories. If I lived in a country where I had open roads, uh, lots of space, straight roads, uh, America, Australia, that sort of thing. I probably would get a cruiser. Uh, Indian maybe, I like Indians or Victories. They're quite cool. But then I like Supermotos, the KTM 690s at the SMC. I think that's very, very sexy bike. I wouldn't mind one of those. But at the moment, bike, oh, I don't know. See, I like sports bikes as well, but I've never owned one as a single bike because I find them very uncomfortable because I've got metal pins in my shoulders and feet holding me together. So I find them really uncomfortable because I'm tall as well. So I probably wouldn't own one of those as a single bike, but I would have them if I had a garage full of bikes, like loads of bikes. But at the moment, to get back to the original question, it's out of the Africa Twin and the BMW 90. I would sway slightly towards the BMW at the moment simply because I'm fed up with chains at the moment. So I'd go for the shaft drive. Anyway, long-winded, but I hope that brings some light to your question. Probably not. Uh, next question, the handsome tuna. <laughs> I hope you are a handsome tuna because you are representing the fishes. Why choose Honda? Uh, I didn't really choose Honda. I've just sort of like fallen into Honda. I've bought a lot of Hondas over the past few years and they're reliable, they're comfortable, they're good on petrol, they look okay. They're not the greatest looking bikes. I think all the other manufacturers uh, do better looking bikes. I bought the CB500 because it was the perfect bike for me at the time. I was doing 180 miles uh, a day for four days a week, seeing my dad. So I needed something cheap, reliable, comfortable, would do everything it says on the tin and it does, it's a spectacular bike, the CB500X. It's underrated and it suits me and it's one of those bikes where I sit here and I think I'm gonna replace it with something else, but then I get onto the bike and I think, do you know what? It's like an old pair of slippers, it's lovely. I love the bike. So that's why I chose that one. The Honda Grom, I chose it because it's a Honda Grom, but I don't necessarily swing towards Honda. I just find them a better dealership around here. We've only got two dealerships around here, Yamaha one and a Honda one. I sway towards a Honda because in the past, going into the Yamaha dealership, I mean, I haven't been in there for two, three years, to be fair. Uh, they haven't been that excited about selling me a bike. So that pushed me towards the Honda dealership where I found out a friend of mine works, which is cool. I've got two friends that work there now. Well, I've got quite a few friends that work there now. I've been there so much. Uh, and they seem more enthusiastic about selling me a bike. Uh, so I bought the first bike off them. The backup from the dealer has been great. So I gravitate towards them. I would buy a used bike off them. It doesn't have to be Honda, but I gravitate towards that dealership. But I buy Hondas because that's their dealership. And the last few I bought have been brand new. 
so check them out if you're down that way. Causedon, it's Dobles Motorcycles, and uh, go and see Ian on the sales desk, and he will set you up a good deal. And if you do buy a bike off him, I want commission because he's had enough money off me in the past. He owes me at least a beer. Right, next question. I hope I say your name right. Sakir, Sakir. Right, the question is, how long was it after you started riding that you had your first crash slash fall? Mine was four days. Four, four days, that's good going. That's good going. I can't remember my first crash. Not that I was knocked out or unconscious or anything. Uh, on my first bike, I don't think I had a crash. I mean, I, not in the crash in the sense that I hurt myself. I probably fell off it a few times. I remember breaking it. It was a Thomas 50cc scooter thing. But the first crash I remember was on a uh, DS125 Suzuki I had. A uh, young lady cut across the front of me, grabbed the front brake, tucked it, fell on the floor. Didn't get up and say too much because she was <laughs> very good looking and I was young. So there you go. That's what happened with that one. Right, the next question is at Lee Ward. Uh, thanks for the question, mate. What's the worst road rage that I have experienced? I haven't really experienced too much road rage. Uh, I'm not blowing my own trumpet here. <laughs> well, I am a little bit. No, it's not that I think I'm a great driver. I'm not a great driver. I'm not a great rider. I make mistakes. And the difference is when I do make mistakes, I apologize. I hold my hands up and I say to the person involved, sorry, mate, I do apologize. My fault. Uh, and that's usually the end of it. it. It diffuses the situation. I mean, I've got a few videos on YouTube that is a little bit road ragey and it's more me reacting rather than causing. So it's not them having a go at me so much. So it is a bit of a hard one to answer. I did have an incident with a lorry when I was younger that was, it was amusing, but it could have been pretty bad for me. Uh, I was having a little bit of an argument with a lorry driver. We were cutting each other up. I was only about 23, something like that. Uh, he gestured for me to pull over. So I obliged to pull over, jumped out the car, and this guy stepped out the lorry. He didn't step down, he just stepped straight out, probably six foot eight. He had arms the size of my legs. He was tattooed up. He looked so aggressive and mean. It was unreal. But I was out the car now and I thought, well, I might get a couple in <laughs> before I get my ass handed to me on a plate. Uh, so I thought, I have to think a bit quicker with this. So I held my hand out like that, like a handshake gesture. And he comes strolling over and he's like, what's that? He was a bit wary that I was going to try something because uh, it's looked like, oh, he's, he's trying to sideswipe me with the old friendly handshake. But anyway, I said, no, no, I'm going to shake your hand, mate. He went, what's that all about? I said, well, I said, I'll have a go. I said, but I'm not an idiot. <laughs> and I sort of said it in a joking way and sort of like held my hand. And I was at a bit of a distance just in case he had a swing. Uh, but he held his hand out and he shook my hand. And it, again, it diffused the situation. Although I shouldn't really have been in that situation in the first place. It diffused it and... We had a good chat and a laugh by the side of the road. I, I sat speaking to him for about five minutes. And we probably would have been good friends if we'd uh, sort of like met in the pub or in a different scenario to that. Although we did have a laugh at the side of the road, we didn't exchange phone numbers and go on a date. <laughs> but anyway, that's the closest I've come to getting my ass handed to me on a plate. Uh, and if he was to go, I probably would have been even more ugly now. Right, the next question is from the Green Grom. He has a green grom, you know, and he has a YouTube channel, so go and check him out. Did your mate get a soft closed lid in the end? Did your mate get a soft... Oh, this is referring back to my Christmas video where I broke my friend's toilet seat. Uh, I've got a soft closed toilet seat, one of those ones you let go, it goes... And he hasn't, so after that, having a, uh, as they say in London, a Jimmy Riddle, uh, I went to close the lid, slammed it, smashed it, so I had to buy him a new lid, but no, he hasn't replaced it with a soft closed toilet lid because he's a, he's a little bit tight to be honest. Right, next one, R Chamberlain, what's your job? Now I've decided not to answer that on here, not because I do anything fantastic, special or secretive or wonderful or really bad or embarrassing. It's, 
just I want to keep my work separate from my hobby this is just a hobby uh, so if I see you at a meet or something feel free to come up and ask me I will tell you in person I just won't say on YouTube next question is from Chunks Life Chunks question for you is what's your favorite size titty <laughs> And do you like large nipples or small nipples? To be fair, I did say you can ask me anything. So I was kind of expecting uh, a non-motorcycle related uh, question. So to get onto that, what's my favorite size? I don't have a favorite size. I quite like them all. Let me think. Yep, I like them all. Uh, I think it did. I don't know, I don't really have a size. It's a bit like my motorbike question, it depends what mood I'm in. So, as long as the lady's comfortable with whatever she's got, I'm comfortable with that. And as for the nipples, I suppose it goes on the size of the breast. Bigger the breast, bigger the nipple. Right, next question. Moving swiftly on. Mark Horobin, what would you prefer to ride on a day out? In brackets, not commute, the 500 or the Grom. It depends on the day out. The 500 I'll take every day, because it is comfortable, it does great mileage, uh, as in it's got a big tank, and it's comfortable, and I've got storage on there. The Grom is not as comfortable, there's no storage whatsoever, so, uh, I couldn't take anything with me. I'd have to carry it on my back in a rucksack, which I don't really like doing. But if it's small little twisty roads, tiny roads, I'll take the Grum probably, because it's a giggle. But if I was, had to sit there and do distance, it'd be the 500. And it also depends on who I'm out with. If I'm out with big bikes, then I'm going to take the, the 500. If there's uh, smaller bikes or people that are not fussed about getting anywhere quick, take the Grum. Right, next question. Oh, it's the last question now. From the happy rider. I hope you are a happy rider because with a name like that, if you're miserable ever, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Do you plan to come to North America? I do. I don't know when, but I do plan it. Well, that's not a plan then, is it? That's just a hope. I hope to come to America. Uh, whether it's this year or next year, I'm not sure. I'm trying to wangle some time off at the moment and get some money together so I can fly over and get to the California meetup. The, uh, I'll find a, a link to it or poster or whatever and I'll stick it on the screen. But I'm going to try and get to this one. I think it's in July. So I haven't got a lot of time and I'm trying to wangle some way of getting there and hire a bike. And But I'd say it's unlikely that it'll be this year. Very unlikely it'll be this year but you never know. Anyway, that's the end of the question. So thank you for the questions. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the support on the channel. I really appreciate that as well. Uh, feel free to ask any questions at any time. I will either answer them in the comments box on the video concerned, or I'll compile them and put them together for another questions and answers video later on. But as I said, thank you very much for watching. So until next time, stay safe and fish out.